when they arrive, they'll make their way to the Victoria Concert Hall and Theater and search for Alan Wu. Alan Wu? Host of The Amazing Race Asia. Ready, set, go! Welcome to the eighth wonderful episode of You Are Team Member, the Amazing Race Asia podcast from Reality TV Warriors. My name is Michael Harmstone, and joining me as always is the Canadian who only wastes a couple of minutes on bitter things, Logan Saunders. Afternoon. Afternoon. And a happy 150th podcast to you as well, even though you're on like 120 odd, I think. Well, Canada turns 150 uh, next year, so close enough. This will be your 130th, so you can bask in my celebration as well if you really want. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so it's all about you, Michael, really. Everything is. Surely you should know that by now. <laughs> and what better way to celebrate your 150th podcast than with JK and Mike being eliminated? I know! <laughs> How happy am I? I've not actually spoken to them since it was officially confirmed that they got eliminated, but <laughs> That's just mean, Michael. Next thing you know, you're going to call them fat and selfish. And then he's going to be on the same... Uh, rope courses you and you're gonna have to rely on him to help you complete the task the only thing that could have made this better is if the Voldemort Mussolini's were also eliminated if somehow they were just brought back for this one episode and, and the bottom two teams were eliminated so that it would just be Gino and Jesse and JK and Mike somehow eliminated well it was outside of Canada so they probably wouldn't have done very well no they probably would have had a tough time uh, comprehending how to leave the country but on the subject of Amazing Race Canada, did you see the, um, the Twitter chat with Mike Vickerson last week? Between between you and Mike? I saw a little bit of it. Mm, the chat between me and Mr. Vickerton about um, basically how backwards Amazing Race Canada is. And we got official confirmation that they're not going to the UK, so, you know, sod that season already. I might have summer off. <laughs> they may, that could mean that they're not leaving Canada whatsoever. Except to, like, St. Pierre and McKellen, or whatever that island is off the coast of Newfoundland that is controlled by France. I think we're pretty much in agreement that if that does happen, we're not covering it. Yeah, it's safe to say that's pretty much, yeah, that's that's general consensus. Unless you, Kurt and Shelley, or Gordon Wayne are on it. In which case it will be completely not about the programme and just taking the piss out of whoever's on it. Which would be different from any other season, how? Because we won't be talking about the cast at all, it'll just be, you know, taking the piss out of the cast. Oh wait, that's, yeah, that's every mm-hmm. season, isn't it? Isn't that what uh, Eric and Rowan have just had a drink for their uh, speed bump uh, this week? What, taking the piss? I should hope it wasn't an Indonesian woman's bitter piss. <laughs> it's the brew of the day. Just get blindfolded and drink this mysterious concoction. Production's not the only uh, group that's cutting costs this season. (laughs) The best thing about this is production are going to listen to this joke, and I'm not cutting it. So, previously... So previously, six teams raced to Singapore after another cruel elimination for Lisa and Nicole. Five. Wasn't it five? It was five teams. You're ruining the joke that I do every week, Logan. Shut up. Oh, how could I forget Tara Basra was now a contestant? No! After another cruel elimination for Lisa and Nicole, the five remaining teams dove into an underwater roadblock. Come on. All right, Lisa and Nicole were in, they were in the corner of the screen. I completely forgot about that. It's another salvage pass joke, as every week, Logan, because we seriously have no new material ever. <laughs> What, 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 are, what are viewers going to expect after 150 podcasts with you, really? Exactly. The Apprentice podcast this week is number 175, may I point out. The podcast is going to be turning 200 at the start of next year. We're like contemporary episodes of The Simpsons. Everything's just rehashed material from the 90s. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, we are probably going to reach 200 with Hunted. Maybe Amazing Race 29 if... If we're really, really slow, because let's be honest, there's no, never going to be any Hell's Kitchen podcasts again. Um, 
After a, another cruel elimination for Lisa and Nicole, the five remaining teams dove into an underwater roadblock. Yvonne and Chloe were the first to come up for air, but JK and Mike caught up with them when looking for the next route marker, and they teamed up to find the OUE building. You scratch your butt, you scratch your uh, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Good deal, right? Deal, 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 guys. Oh, you're crossing over. I was making a Chloe joke, and you just proceeded to go straight into Amazing Race Canada 4. Crossing streams, it's like Ghostbusters, you can't cross Amazing Race franchises. <laughs> Unless Wu and Monty become firm friends, which is what I want to happen. Uh, most teams had their eyes set on the next route marker, but Eric and Rona got lost when they thought they'd spotted a flag and didn't. And JK and Mike won their second leg in a row on home ground, but Eric and Rona checked in last and were thankfully saved from elimination. And pretty much didn't receive a real penalty, penalty for being in last. And did you notice where they were flying to next? Oh, it's um wonderful land. So, something about it being wondrous. Um, oh, Alice in Wonderland. It is indeed Alice in Wonderland. Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, yes. And fun fact, we've got a, an away day with work on Monday. And we're doing an escape room, and one of the rooms is Alice in Wonderland themed, so it's very possible I could be doing an Alice in Wonderland themed escape room on Monday. Wow. Hopefully they have the potion there that makes you tiny, and the Mad Hatter and the mushrooms and stuff. That This could have, been, could have been a really interesting episode of Amazing Race Age if that were the case. Although I think it was Wonderland, because I'm pretty sure I hallucinated by seeing Tara Bosdra. I think you'll find we was just playing Pokemon Go on the streets of uh, Joey Carter, and um, a ditto came up as Tara Bosdra. <laughs> Pop culture! <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit further down, I do just have a wild Tara Bosdra appeared, mainly because I've spent like 40 hours on Pokemon already. I wrote down that too, actually, in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need to find the um, the sound effect that appears when a, a uh, wild Pokemon attacks. Yeah, we need to insert, yeah, right when we mentioned Tara Basro on the task. What type would Tara Basro be? Uh, the sassy type. No, that would be her nature, obviously. Fairy? Yeah, yeah, she could be a fairy Pokemon. She could be incredibly irritating to me. Mm-hmm. Although not as irritating as the Lolan Raichu is being right now. Alan Wu would be steel type because of his abs. Or rock. <laughs> He's a combination of rock and steel. He's the onyx of Amazing Race Asia. Okay, then compare everyone else to Pokemon. Uh, let's see. Eric would this be match up. It's going to be difficult. Eric obviously would also be a rock type. No, Eric would, Eric would have to be match up, I think. Oh, fighting. Yeah. Yes. JK and, uh, let's see, uh, Maggie, and Maggie and Perul would be normal. Um, Rona would be fire. Uh, JK and Mike would be, uh, um, what type would they be? JK and Mike wouldn't be psychic. I'll put it that way. They're, they're now ghosts, because they're eliminated. Same with Tara Basra. Basra was ghost for a while. So... Well, we're, we're, they're really in wonderful Indonesia, as and they're going to go to the uh, home place of Toronto Blue Jays' uh, uh, legendary uh, baseball player, Joe Carter. The city of Joe Carter, Indonesia. Joe Yakarta, wonderful Indonesia, because we did actually have to say wonderful Indonesia instead of just Indonesia. And they have mm-hmm. to find the Goa Jambang to search for their next clue, unless your name is Eric and Rona, in which case you've got to head to... Pasar Kalasan. Or before that, they get to go into the Premier Garuda Lounge. They do. They get to take over Louisa and Treasury's infomercial rights and uh, and give it a, a good old-fashioned Garuda infomercial. I'm so jealous because her chairs are way more comfortable than the chair I'm sitting in right now. That was my favourite bit of the entire episode, I think. It was just round and going. And the chairs are so comfortable. It's a lounge. <laughs> you can get comfortable chairs anywhere, Rona. And I'm fully aware that you will probably hear me moaning about this. But <laughs> yes, you can compliment the buffet and everything because it looked like it was quite an expansive buffet and quite nice. But comfortable chairs, not so much. Maybe if they had beds. There was even an unaired, unaired clip where she was in the Odong Odong chair. And she was like, man, this seat is just nowhere near as comfortable as the Garuda Premier Lounge. This is inadequate. You know how most teams have realised that if you talk about sponsors, you get more airtime? Maybe that's what Eric and Rona were doing. They didn't want a, an under-the-radar edit and instead just had a, a Garuda edit. It's a special edit category. 
actually Eric put two chairs slightly just a few inches up, apart and he started doing dips with them and that unfortunately that didn't uh make it to into the edit due to time constraints but he did that just to be like look at what you can do in the premier lounge put two chairs together and oh man you can really work those abs uh, so yeah eric and rona when they had to pass our callasan have to identify a mysterious concoction whilst blindfolded <laughs> they could have been trolled so hard to drink something while blindfolded it, they have no it could have been anything I really think it was Carabao urine by the way that Rona reacted to the drink. What I would have thought would have been hilarious is if they've been roofied. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> that's a real speed bump, because then they, they'd be so disoriented for the rest of the leg. You know, they're, that memory roadblock with, with the temple, that would have been much tougher. <laughs> Surya, Ganesha, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> It's all a bit easy to me, guys. Let's be honest, Israel has probably done that before. It seems like the sort of non-elimination penalty they would have. Just take these two mysterious pills. What could possibly go wrong? And then when they reached the pit stop, they could have had Zach Galifianakis there and say, yeah, you're, when you're roofied, you're most likely to end up on the floor. <laughs> Hangover reference. Yeah, that final task would have been a, a bit more odd had Erica Rona been roofied. Just all the bright, bright colours. Yeah, and then Veronica Mars could have been one of the locals with them. And they're just tripping balls. It would have been Veronica Mars and Bill Cosby uh, with them while they're in the roofie car. I cannot believe that we are making Bill Cosby jokes now. Uh, I mean, I think I already crossed the line a little bit with the Veronica Mars joke. <laughs> and once they land in uh, Joey Carter, there's a little bit of a taxi scramble. Yeah, what, what what did J.K. have in his mouth when he opened up the clue? By the way, he looked like Bubble Man from Mega Man. It was an apple, I think. That was an apple. Yeah. The real question, though, is what did J.K. call her? Because uh, according to J.K. on their show on Thursday, he said a lot stronger language than was on air. Which was? He definitely said "fuck" at least once, and I, I'm still waiting to hear back what the rest of the words were. <laughs> I see. It's funny, it's even funnier in the cab, because he's like, Oh man, I'm never going to talk to Treasury again! And then literally two minutes later in the episode at the roadblock, he's like, Hey Treasury, can you stop moving so I can move across the move across the rope? Hey Treasury, stop being a fat fucking bitch! <laughs> it's like they couldn't have come up with a better roadblock, because all other roadblocks like that, because that's a classic uh, Amazing Race task, to go across a rope uh, at a great height. All other times, you're just on it by yourself on that on that one piece of rope. Here, this is the very first time ever where multiple uh, multiple uh, contestants were able to uh, were forced to be on there at the same time. Thus, you could uh, start shaking the rope to uh, make it into a Mario Party esque mini game and and keep shaking it until somebody falls off. So it's only fitting that after the biggest fight between two teams all season long that. JK and Treasury had to find a way to cooperate. I think in honour of JK and Mike's elimination, we need to hear what JK saying the words fat fucking bitch would sound like. Uh, <laughs> next week, next week. There's other people here. <laughs> but last time you promised something, you didn't deliver, so I'm still waiting for you to recite the entire college team poker rap here. Oh, right. That's the one promise I'll always break. <laughs> Maybe when, when we get you wasted over Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> when I get drunk, I just sound like JK. You have to prepare something for the class. Yeah. Mainly because I want to see my family uh, look very, very confused when you recite, like, 700 Pokemon to them. But yeah, it's kind of funny with Treasury and JK on the rope that just Treasury was able to calm down and be chill about the whole thing after JK was, was swearing at her and being angry with her uh, in the airport. And then she's like, who's the selfish one now, JK? And I know we've had a lot of love for the editors, partially because we know that basically the entire production team listens to us. But the cut between Louisa and Treasury saying, oh, we worry that the Filipinos are aligning against us. And then we have, it, that cuts straight to Maggie uh, and Perul saying, yeah, yeah, we've got an alliance against Louisa and Treasury with Eric and Rona. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that probably wasn't at the same moment, but it's still hilarious. Yeah, the, yeah, just brilliant editing between 
not only with yeah with JK and Treasury's back and forth of I'm never talking to Treasury again until two minutes from now into uh yeah into like Maggie yeah. It was very office-like with the the cut between Louise and Treasury and uh, Maggie and Cruel being like, yeah, yeah, we want them out. Oh, mama, they're coming for us. As opposed to Amazing Race Canada, where the editors don't actually tell us they're listening to us. Amazing Race Asia really do. And I think it helps that we are very fond of their program. They took a long time off and it was worth it. You know what would make, make us even more fond of them is if they could convince... Garuda Indonesia <laughs> to hook us up with a vacation to wonderful Indonesia. So we have to talk about this country for two more weeks. I would be perfectly happy with them doing the idea that we had last week, which is us doing the web stuff for them next year. Mm-hmm. We could we could be flown to Southeast Asia and do commercials for them. Oh, I, I'm a complete sellout. If Garuda wanted to fly me anywhere, I would be singing their praises. Would you also sing the the Six Ducks song too? Quack, quack, quack. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of music, in the, when teams are in the airplane on the way to Indonesia, you get to see like the music selection they have on the plane. And that, what was the group name? I even wrote it down too. It was Brat Pack with three T's. <laughs> no, it wasn't the Canadian one-hit wonder. Um, oh, it was called Hai Zhao Don. And I even listened to their single that got them famous. And it is worse than Brian Adams and Justin Bieber uh, combined with um, with with pin- pins being poked into my arm. So you wouldn't have been a fan of the Fear Factor piercing task then? No, because that music pierced my ears greatly. So once teams get to Goa Jambang, it's a roadblock and a wild tower appears. <laughs> She, she just came so unannounced too, because because Alan introduced the first clue of oh teams are going to Joe Carter Indonesia, and it's like oh maybe Tara isn't back this season. But then suddenly here we are at the roadblock, and she talks for about three seconds, and then it goes for straight back to Alan Wu, and Alan Wu gets to do the roadblock, but not uh, but not Tara. So let me get this straight. Somehow in the rest period, she managed to chisel her feet out of the concrete blocks that Singaporean Mafia left her in in that tank. And somehow hold her breath for long enough to be able to chisel her feet out of it. She has gills. They're multiplying. The gills are multiplying. She has gills. They're multiplying. (laughs) Computer hacking gills. Bow hunting gills. uh, Video gaming gills. Guys only want to date girls and have gills. Napoleon Dynamite. All right. You haven't seen Napoleon Dynamite. I haven't seen many films, Logan. As you well know, I watch far too much foreign television to to watch films. You'll love Napoleon Dynamite. That would be your type of humor. When was the last time I went to the cinema? Um... Oh yeah, movies are really expensive in England. I forgot about that. Yeah, they are. Actually, I didn't forget about that. That's why I don't watch many. Yeah, like with Napoleon Dynamite, like this is how popular the film was here in uh, Canada and the States uh, growing up, because... It came out when I was in the seventh grade, saw it in theater, and then we got it on DVD. Even my brother-in-law, who's 10 years older than me, constantly quotes it. And then uh, um, in high school, it's the only film that the comedy that's clean enough and funny enough for them to show uh, on a movie day. So we watched that, I think, in two different classes during the eighth grade as well. And then there was a failed TV show uh, thing they did, uh, I think a year ago, as well as a cartoon, and all were terrible. But the film, the original film itself, uh, is awesome. Awesome. And um, our ferry does indeed have a cinema on board. I'm just looking at the oh. the listings at the moment. They have a theater on board. Yeah, it's it's only tiny. Oh, I thought I was picturing like IMAX, like in huh. That sounds a bit luxurious. <laughs> no, it's tiny. With it's basically a screen behind one of the bars, but. Yeah, it's showing Trolls, Bridget Jones's Baby, and Keeping Up with the Joneses at the moment. Dear God! <laughs> That's the worst lineup ever. Not even the original Bridget Jones, it's one of the sequels. What's the next they're going to show next Friday, which was the third film in the, in the Friday series with Ice Cube? And they also seem to be doing a Comic-Con mini-cruise in uh, the day after my birthday. 
with um, day tickets and transfers to Dutch Comic Con, as well Dutch as Comic Con, as well as guests on board, including one of the Slytherins from Harry Potter, uh, quite a few, <laughs> quite a few Doctor Who both people. Crab and not Goyle. <laughs> they couldn't get both Crab and Goyle. Colin Creevy was a Slytherin. I thought he was. I don't think he was. He was the camera guy. He was the camera kid. You know far too much about Harry Potter if you're right. Yeah, he was like Hufflepuff? Gryffindor, actually. Oh, it was Gryffindor. Yeah, I'm thinking Creepy definitely wasn't Slytherin. I don't remember him anyway. By the way, do they have Hogwarts near Manchester? No, that's somewhere down south, I think. Oh. Although if we do end up going through King's Cross Station, they do have a, uh, a half a trolley going through one of the walls. Oh, that's so awesome. But it's always full of Japanese tourists. <laughs> Yeah, it would fit right in by the sounds of it. I mean, full. <laughs> <laughs> like they fit into the half trolley? All of them? They just all sit in there? Basically, yeah. <laughs> We're going on some weird tangents today. It's, it's been like 25 minutes already. <laughs> oh, and uh, to back up a little bit to so when teams are in the airport, do you think J.K. Mike's goal was to give away their premier lounge to one of the all-female teams and did not anticipate that the one team who would pick up the lounge would be the dating couple? No, from what I've heard, JK and Mike wanted to give it to Eric and Rona anyway, but they thought if they did that, then that would make people think there's an alliance. So they decided to draw it, and, you know, Eric and Rona got it anyway. Oh, it all worked out. Apparently there was an unaired, sort of, quite strong friendship between Eric and Rona and uh, JK and Mike, which obviously oh. proves that Eric and Rona don't have great taste. Well, speaking of great taste, that speed bump... Uh, probably wasn't the greatest taste they've had. I know we talk about um, how bad is a speed bump when they appear. This one is low as here, isn't it? This has got to be right at the very bottom with untying a knot. Because they, this is untying a knot or that drink task from Amazing Race 16 with the Cowboys. Yeah, this is Amazing Race Asia's version of untying a knot, I think, or sitting on an ice chair. Mm -hmm. It's just drinking cowbell urine for two seconds being like, yep. That tastes like you're into me. <laughs> and you know who would be an expert on drinking rank shots? That would be Ellen Wu. Joe gave me the green light, I picked up the pail, and just unloaded a, a waterfall of just the most rancid crap I've ever had and probably ever will have in my life. I'll never come close to that stuff again. Oh, yes. He probably just only needed like one sip and he was able to identify it. Not gonna lie, I just love playing that clip of Ellen Wu. <laughs> Any excuse to to drag out the the woo mix of uh, of the the face cream clip again. So yeah, a wild Tara Bazaar appeared, and uh, in this robot, one team member must walk a tightrope and then climb down a rope ladder to grab their next clue. If they drop the clue or fall off the tightrope, they have to head to the back of the line or face a two-hour penalty. And it was Treasury, J.K. Parole, Yvonne, and Eric doing this roadblock. And yeah, that was one of the great uh, remixes to a classic Amazing Race task. Exactly, everyone was expecting it last week on the Marina Bay Sands, but no, instead we just get get it over a cave in Indonesia. Sorry, wonderful Indonesia. And we get a wrinkle to it in the fact that two people can go on opposite ends at the same time. Imagine if they did that in one of the other like American seasons. where the, Imagine if Colin and Christy and Charlotte and Myrna had to do this roadblock at the same time. Granted, hopefully Mirna was doing it over Charlotte, because I think Charlotte would have difficulty <laughs> grabbing the rope, but... Uh, I was going to say, probably would have said in the clue, Mirna, you have to do this. Yeah. Should have been Mirna, Colin, and then just to troll them, also throw Big Easy uh, onto the rope. Like, somebody would have died, I think. I think Mirna may have stabbed Colin, or Colin would have just uh, punched Mirna in the face. And then Big Easy would have just started dancing to just annoy everyone else that much more, even though he's already like 300 pounds. It just, it would have been a big mess. They should have added Micah as well in, just for funsies. <laughs> yeah. She wouldn't have done it. She's like the, Micah from season 15 has to be the most ill-suited person ever for the Amazing Race, because she refused to do anything. And I'm very surprised that, this sort of task hasn't appeared as a double battle anywhere yet. Because competing on the tightrope seems like the sort of thing they would do for a double battle. Yeah, they could have had similar competition on there, I guess. Yeah, the first person to make it to the middle and grab a flag wins the next clue. The loser has to wait for the next person to arrive. 
Yeah, as uh, their opposing team members try to throw sandbags at them. It's not survival. Make it into a survival challenge. <laughs> just have massive sand- sandbags over uh, Goa Jumblong. And it's just t- a bunch of Tara clones um, attached to the sandbag that knock you off. Tara Sassy Sisters. <laughs> yes. It's like the other, the multicolored Yoshis. Like there's one le- legitimate Yoshi, and then there's like 10 other Yoshis that just get abused. And Tara's added a surprise into one of the sandbags. It's actually filled with the concrete bits from her feet from the uh, the time she crossed the Singaporean Mafia. Yes. <laughs> yes, th- this bag's filled with sand, this bag's filled with concrete, and this one's filled with bricks. Good luck, kids. That bitch just knocked off my glasses. <laughs> that bitch just broke all of my ribs, more like. <laughs> and um, JK bitches at Treasury saying she weighs too much, and she re- responds by having a mid-air argument with him and just trying to tire him out. Yeah. I'm amazed that Treasury was able, was willing to help JK after being called fat and selfish in the span of an hour. What I would have done if I were her was get my clue, go back to the end, and then just shake the top rope until he fell, fell off. Yeah. They was probably no, told been... not to do that, but... <laughs> yeah. They would have been what I would have done. But I'm also horrible, so what can I say? And we see a game of scissors, paper, stone being played. Come on, guys. It's called rock, paper, scissors. Not scissors, paper, stone. Are you aware of my rant from Hunted, I think it was, about rock, paper, scissors? It might. It was either Hunted or Apprentice. I did bitch about people calling it scissors, paper, stone. Because it's rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Come on, guys. Get your head out your ass. And despite... Louisa and Treasury's motivation being revealed as their families last week. What is their real motivation? It's to make Indonesia proud. Yep, and they get to do it two more times after this. Possibly. In the same way that Monty always tells teams to make Canada proud, Wu told teams to make Indonesia proud. Go tres, go Louisa, tres, Louisa, juara. Go tres, go Louisa, tres, Louisa, juara. Tres, Louisa, champions. I'm surprised you didn't learn the chant. I would have thought it would have been right up your street to learn that chant. I, I don't know the local Indonesian language. That's half the fun. Mm-hmm. I just know it's, it translates to Tres Luisa Champions. Repeatedly. Have you not noticed that the motivation of most of the things that I ask you to do is to make you look like a knob? Yeah. Especially, I, I appreciate the Queen uh, adaptation, which is, we are the wonderful Indonesian champions, my friends. And we'll keep on fighting with JK over the number of taxis being called. To the, the end. end. We are the champions law. We're well, the champions law. Oh, mama. So, Louisa and Treasury do leave first, and teams must now find the Prambaran Temple and search the south side for their next clue. The south side? Is that, is that a Moby reference? Moby and Gwen Stefani? Oh, Logan. You and your current references. That song is only 16 years old, Michael. Come on now. Only. <laughs> There's a much more modern reference coming very, very soon. Well, was it was it the the fact that the Roblox was the Roblox into was Walk the Line, which is a reference to a Johnny Cash movie and song? It was not actually. That's not the reference you were talking about. Oh, the other Roblox. No, it's the fact that Maggie told Perul to just shake it off. Oh yes, Taylor Swift. Because the JK is going to J J J J J, and then the states in the election is going to K K K. Maggie wants Perul to shake, 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 shake it off, shake it off. Which she kind of did when she got to the end. Yeah, she just shook JK off and he fell like a sack of shit. <laughs> Which is probably what uh, Eric and Rona tasted at the, at the speed bump. No, it was one of the unaired um, bags that Tara Bastro provided for people to swing at their uh, their opponents. Hey Tara, what's in this bag? <laughs> Do you remember that elephant task? Yeah, I've been carrying around sacks of elephant dung just for this task for you. And, yeah, so, I love that Peril was also cursing at JK. Yeah. She even, she even got an F-bomb there. Uh, you, you effing keep your balance, JK. Peril can get loud, too. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like, wow, Peril's angry. I haven't seen her this angry since she had to sit around somebody else eating meat. Yeah, the hilarious thing about this is she got so angry at the tightrope, and then for the second robot, she was just so calm and centred for... The temple complex that was all to do with Hinduism. It was a dichotomy for her that day. Yes. You know who wasn't uh, relaxed at one of the roadblocks? Yvonne. No, Chloe. <laughs> yes! 
get in. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't be able to tell us one team apart. I corrected that really quickly, though. So, so each did one roadblock. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> I'm amazed that Eric didn't uh, join JK, Hussein, and Adrian in the this this uh, traversing this tightrope just isn't for me club. Well, the thing is, Eric and Rona had a a reprieve last time, so they are more motivated, and also they're rock stars. They just rock through the tasks. I think Eric and Rona are a lot more consistent performers than people give them credit for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've only really screwed up that that task last week with the binoculars. Other than that, they've always hovered around the same position all season long. And Eric needs to get over his fear of heights because it's not as much as his fear of prawns. Yeah, he got over his fear of heights easier than than fearing aquatic life. I love that Eric is just getting so unlucky with having to do every single task that relates to his fears. He's had the prawn task, then he had the diving task last week, and now he's got the heights task. Hopefully there's a clown task next uh, episode, or one that involves sock puppets. Or just a, um, a Pokemon Go task that involves catching Mr. Mime. <laughs> or uh, Alan Wu will just dress up as a giant fish at the pit stop. <laughs> I would love to see that. <laughs> or they should have, like, at the finish line, at the finish line, Eric and Rona are leading all other teams, and then Alan Wu just dumps a bucket of prawns onto the finish map, and then Eric just runs around in a circle until Maggie and Perul pass him, uh, and then uh, they win the they win the season. I think we need more costumes from uh, the hosts of Amazing Race Asia, especially when there's no greeters involved. Yeah, we need to have a petition. Oh, I love petitions. I love Amazing Race related petitions. They have a wonderful history. Yeah, the potato spitting and the. All the other wonderful tasks like suing people for millions of dollars. Oh, yes. Oh, good times. I love it when JK falls off the rope, not just because it's JK falling off the rope, but also Maggie makes the funniest, over the top, cartoonish reaction there, uh, fa- facial expression when she sees it happen. She gasps in that really over the top tone, too, on the audio. Well, to be fair to her, They've got a nice balance going between the two of them, so the rope's not really moving that much. And then as JK falls, the rope just springs up, which, you know, makes her very vulnerable. Yeah, like, that's the type of face I would see somebody make if the rope had actually had snapped. Then I would be gasping and being horrified. Yeah, I can't really blame Maggie for being that shocked, basically, because it would be quite a shocking moment. Especially if you're just trying to get on with the task and, you know, then you get sprung up into the air by about 50 feet. Yeah. And because it's JK, you don't know if that harness is, is going to hold. See, I was trying to avoid making weight jokes about JK. <laughs> well, he made a weight joke about Treasury. So, I I feel like after he mocks Treasury for her weight, I feel like he wouldn't, he's not the type of person who would be sensitive about that. Oh, and by this time... Treasury has already completed the second roadblock, because she made a story out of all the names. Yeah, Treasury becomes the first person, I believe, in uh, English-speaking Amazing Race to do two roadblocks on the same double roadblock leg. Didn't somebody else also do two roadblocks this uh, episode? Yeah, someone else did it, but Treasury was the first. That's the key. Yeah, she gets the distinction. And she's the first one to tell a story while doing a roadblock, too. Well, that's how you win that sort of roadblock. She's also the first person to to admit that she was a mad lady talking to herself. So JK considers taking the time penalty, and um, Perul and Maggie leaving second, Yvonne and Chloe leaving third, JK decided not to take the penalty, Eric and Rona leaving fourth, and JK and Mike leave last. And the second roadblock is Who Recognises Divine Order? And in this roadblock, one team member must search the temple complex and identify the Hindu gods from their nameplates with the correct places on the map to receive their next clue. And... To reinforce the winner's edits, the only person whose religious beliefs are outright announced is Parul. Who'd have thunk? Parul is Hindu. Hindu Parul from Hyrule. Actually, Eric and Rona's religious beliefs have been on show the past couple of weeks. Yeah, but they didn't ex- say, like, state their exact precise religion. No. It's not like Parul, where it's like Parul and Maggie, where we're finding out about their family. And just everything they think about the race and all their and their background. 
Oh, I really don't disagree with you, by the way. I 100% think that Perul and Maggie are winning this race. But Eric and Rona are a close second now. I don't know if it's that close. Maggie and Perul's edit is really, really obvious to me. Yeah, compared to um, compared to the other two options, which is Louisa and Treasury and, and Yvonne and Chloe, do you really think anyone else is winning? I don't. No. So yeah, it's Treasury, Perul, Chloe, Rona and Mike doing this roadblock. And there's really not not a lot to say about Louisa and Treasure's performance apart from the fact that they leave first. Yeah, because by the time you finish talking about what they're doing at each task, they've already done it. They're rather good at their memorization tasks, I think. I, I thought for sure, though, we would see the um, an, uh, a contestant from season six of The Apprentice, though. Because Saria was, was one of the deities. I haven't seen that much of The American Apprentice. <laughs> seen every episode of the British one, not much of the American one. Probably a good thing in 2016. I do know certain things like the uh, the infamous washing powder task from Celebrity Apprentice, which we've referenced a couple of times on the Apprentice podcast, which you can find every week on the Reality CB Warriors feed. But yeah, I don't particularly know that much of the older American Apprentice seasons. And yet those are the only ones I'm familiar with. Yeah. Did you know, Michael, fun fact, that the host of The Apprentice is now the president? Well, president-elect. Yeah, but I guess the Electoral College could still step in. In theory, they won't. In the same way that the British Parliament won't overturn Brexit, the Electoral College isn't going to overturn the election result. Indeed. Because there would be riots. So, teams must now find an archery station and shoot a bow in the traditional way to hit a target each to receive the next clue. Yeah, from a sitting position, or a kneeling position, I should say. And how would you have done on this task? Uh, good. I would have felt like Link. Hi-ya! Yeah, I have terrible aim, so I would have been shockingly bad at the archery task. And Perul's osteoporosis just looked brutal. It's either that or arthritis. Yeah, Perul managed to get the classic archery injury of the the string hitting her arm, I think. That is painful. And then her arm's already dead from the previous roadblock. Yeah. So this was a mean, mean task. What was, it, what was hilarious, though, is that Maggie's telling Perul, Oh, don't lose it, babe. While Perul is kneeled over, crying on the ground. I think Perul already kind of lost it by the point Maggie stepped in. Just a little. <laughs> and Perul gets two rejections, and then they leave in second place. And Eric and Rona and Yvonne and Chloe both get rejected. Eric and Rona leave in third. And then we get Chloe getting rather frazzled. She was really frazzled at that roadblock. <laughs> in fact, Yvonne, after Chloe starts melting down and she's like, and she's like, oh, can we get a different board? I think that would help me out. And then Yvonne said, as soon as she asked for a different board, I knew instantly she lost her mind. Instantly. She's the Heidi of uh, Masonry Asia. When Chloe said that she wanted to switch board, that was when I realized that she had lost her mind. And um, Yvonne and Chloe do end up leaving in fourth. And Mike says that he's scared of the dark, but then leaves in last. And... Louisa and Treasury finally struggle at a task this leg, with the archery. Not as much as the other, some of the other teams struggled, though. Like, they were gone before anyone else showed up. That's not struggling to me. They still had a massive time advantage. So, um, they leave him first again. Sound like a broken record now. And teams must now find Alun Alun Salutan to find the next clue. To, and at Alun Alun, you'll eventually find Alan Alan Wu. No. Alun Alun Wu and Tara Tara Basro. That's right. And you must drive in Udong Udong, and hopefully, um, unfortunately, the vehicle does not fit any undul undles. Hashtag AXN Tara Tara Basro. <laughs> I think you're fine. Uh, and Maggie is probably the MVP at archery because she gets it, I think, on her first try, actually. Yeah, and then she just has to wait around forever for a rule. And then Eric and Rona show up, and they do. They pass Maggie and Perul, and Rona does so well that she is proclaimed the Filipino archer, archery queen. She gets a crown and everything. All she needs is the is a staff. Uh, so Eric and Rona leave in second with Perul and Maggie in third, and Yvonne and Chloe leaving in fourth, but they can't find a grab. Sorry, no, it's normal taxis now, isn't it? Yeah, it was a normal taxi. They could just claim any taxi. They needed a grab, because, you know, they got... Dumped in the middle of nowhere, basically. Yeah, they could start. They, unfortunately, they're not allowed to hitchhike either. They're, they're not. Uh, they're not Prashant and Sahil from season one of Amazing Race Asia. No. 
and JK and Mike leave it in last. And teams from Snow convince two locals to join them on a Joe ride in an ondong ondong around the square to receive the next clue. Everyone was crying during that temple roadblock. Like, Peru, well, Peru cried during the bow and arrow, but uh, Yvonne, like, Yvonne and Chloe, or, uh, Chloe was crying during, while uh, like, sure? before they shot the bow and arrow. Yes. Rona was really tearing up badly. In fact, there were some really good shots of her just completely uh, melting down when she's trying to remember everything. And then uh, JK has to quote uh, Christie's dad from Australian Survivor by telling Mike to trust himself, and which was probably quickly followed by uh, back yourself. And what he probably said to Treasury was uh, another uh, thing for her to do for herself, which... Uh, Unfortunately, cannot be said. Here's the tactic for that sort of roadblock. I'm assuming there was no requirement to do them all at the same time. So if you have 30 nameplates, as there was roughly, and you've got five areas, go to one, memorize six, come back. It will be much, much quicker than trying to guess. That grounds looked pretty big, though. I wonder how much distance they had to cover. Oh, it was huge. If it's anything like the Ayathaya complexes, which I went to last year... In, uh, in Thailand, then it would have been massive, but it's going to be quicker for you to do one area at a time rather than trying to memorize every single one on your first go. That's true, yeah. I can, or do two areas. Three, five trips may, may be a bit excessive. Yeah, that, well, that that's only a, a sort of theory. But if there's no requirement in the task to say you've got to do them all in one go, then don't do them all in one go. And do you notice how, dr how dramatic the music was when Peru landed her bow and arrow shot? It was very thunderous. Very thunderous music that nobody else got. Oh, they want us to like Peru and Maggie. That's kind of the point. So teams must now take their ondong ondong to the prince's house where Alun, Alun, Wu and Tara Tara Vazo are waiting for them. And that is the pit stop for this leg of the race. The last team to check in for the first time since our Vietnamese lesbian queens were eliminated will be eliminated. I love I love how uh, car, how uh, how how the vehicles were uh, decorated. The I love jo uh, Joja or Joja car or, or Jo Joja from Amazing Race Asia One or Joe Carter. It was very Mario Kart sixty four. It was. You stole another one of my jokes. Yes, I did. <laughs> Suck it, bitch. What the? It looked like rain. It looked like the gra graphics from Rainbow Road. I just thought I'd get you back for stealing my joke last week. Yeah. Turn them out fair play, as Dave Cruiser would say. And as it happens, when you were watching the episode last night, I was about five minutes ahead of you. Oh, really? Yeah, so I just kept getting uh, the messages to say that you'd tweeted about it and uh, seeing that you'd basically seen something that I was five minutes ahead of you from. <laughs> yeah. And Louisa and Treasury obviously check in first, but this begins my favourite subplot of the entire episode, which is nobody taking Tara Basro seriously. She didn't speak once during the map chat. She just said, welcome to wonderful Indonesia. And that was it. Other pit stop readers have, have talked more than Tower of Basro. Like, she didn't speak at all. But also, everyone was saying, like, oh, we got to find Alan. Except JK. JK did acknowledge Tara when he was, when they, uh, him and Mike ran into that alley. He did come back and say, there was no Alan. There was no nothing. There was no Tara. There was no producers. There was no camera crew. There was there was no magazines with those images I like. Like that. That's what J.K. was saying. But there's an even better thing with J.K. and Mike when they get eliminated with Tara Bajra, which actually wasn't in the episode. It was an online only thing. But we'll get there. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And Louise and Treasury finishing first. I believe it's an Amazing Race Asia record for an all female team to win four rounds in one season. I believe you are probably right. And I believe the, but still, it's still impossible for them to tie the world record, though. Because Natalie Megan won seven legs. And in second place is Eric and Rona. There he is. Don't call it a comeback, Michael. Don't you dare. Don't you dare, goddamn, call it a comeback. But it's a comeback story, like Kim Kardashian. Don't you dare. Oh, you just did. I can't believe you called it a comeback. That's exactly what they told you not to call it. And there's no match chat. And there is no match chat, because because we need to check Perul and Maggie in instead in third. Which, they get a very long match at in confessionals and whatnot. They're winning the season, but Eric and Rona are very close behind. I'm looking forward to the, the two Philippines teams being the top two. Yes, you just so there will not be... You don't think there's going to be an all-female final three? No, I think Eric and Rona have 
definitely making the final leg, and I think they're probably going to lose to Perul and Maggie at the end. Yeah, because if it was an all-female final three, um, JK would only have to buy one of the episodes on DVD. I have heard that JK loves television programs that are seven women, one man. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what it's like when I go to sleep at night. Didn't Ozzy from Survivor appear in a program like that? Uh, yes, he did. Except that actually happened. Sevensome, I believe it was called. It didn't happen in a dream that JK had a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I love that JK sassed you on Twitter this week. <laughs> <laughs> I still, he still hasn't done that impression of me yet. I know, I want to hear him do the impression. Do the impression, damn it. And we get the final showdown between JK and Mike and Yvonne and Chloe. Yeah, how close do you actually think that was? Well, considering they were side by side, that must have been... The wrong turn, of course, could have meant it was like five minutes behind, but the fact that they were right there together means that was a tie right before the pit stop. Yeah, but I think there might have been a bit of wonky editing going on. How so? Well, JK and Mike still had someone in the back seat. Uh, I read, uh, I think I actually read uh, JK's statement online saying that if they had turned the right way, that they would have survived the leg. All right. So I assume it was like a five minutes difference. But you're right, there was that person in the back seat there. I know he was giving them directions, but I'm pretty sure that was the same guy that they gave a joyride to. JK loves joyrides, I hear. Well, he does love GTA. He introduced uh, Maggie's son to it. <laughs> yes. You just gotta steal that car run down those hookers, and then get into a shootout with all the people on the streets of San Andreas. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I would love to see GTA San uh, Singapore. Oh no! I accidentally I accidentally chewed a piece of gum. Now with three out of five stars, the cops are after me. Yeah, the cops instantly show up with, uh, with six stars when you uh, run a red light. <laughs> I love you, Singapore. <laughs> uh, so, Yvonne and Chloe do check in in fourth, and narrowly survive the round. They made it by inches, as JK would say. Which leaves the depressingly sad elimination of JK and Mike for my 150th podcast. Yeah, all of Susan Sarandon's and Angelina Jolie's uh, children are weeping right now. What? Susan Sarandon's commercials with the, with the underprivileged uh, youth in Africa, all those commercials she does, and then uh, Angelina Jolie with with the 20 children she adopted from the Congo. They're all weeping right now for JK and Mike. Spoilers, we do not have those adverts over here. Oh, well, you're missing out. Well, Angelina Jolie doesn't have any adverts, just Susan Sarandon does. But Angelina Jolie, I believe she adopted like 10 Congolese children or something like that. And I know I moan about this every week, but it was spoiled for me that JK and Mike go because of the live chat on Facebook. But there was an interesting video on the, um, the Amazing Race Asia Facebook page as well, which was a more extended match chat with JK and Mike. When Tara said, welcome to wonderful Indonesia, she said, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. So she doesn't even remember that she's met them before. Really? She actually said that? She said, it, I'm pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Tara Basro is an amnesiac. So she is not in. She didn't invest any energy into the first two episodes. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Does she remember anyone else? I'm not sure because I haven't seen anyone else's bat chats. But she literally forgot these people. Does she think that different sets of teams run it each week, or that it was Amazing Race Asia season six when she was invited back? Like she thought Amazing Race Asia five was just two episodes, and then. This was the first leg of the new season? Yeah, she she did a, a reverse Amazing Race Canada. She thought they were leaving the country permanently. <laughs> I knew you'd love that. <laughs> That's amazing. That's wonderful, too. It's wonderful. Editors, why didn't you give us that in the main program? That was hilarious. And I've also heard on the grapevine that there was an unaired yield again this week. Yeah, that's confirmed Yeah, on the Wikipedia page and everything. So, two yields that haven't been used a U-turn that wasn't used, and a fast-forward that wasn't claimed. And yet this season is still strong. But there is a yield next week. You mean a U-turn? No, I mean a yield. Another yield? Yeah. There was a yield so that, a, a yield board seen in the preview. Yeah, yeah, it was, just, it was seen in the preview. Okay. So three yields and a U-turn, and only, and we've got to assume that Louis and Treasury are going to be yielded out of the race next week. Yeah, I, I, I'm still... 
thinking Louisa and Treasury biff it on the final leg, but I think Yvonne and Chloe wouldn't be a depressing final boot, that's the thing. Yvonne and Chloe are just kind of there. As much as I'm sure they're nice, despite the fact Logan still can't sell them fart, they're just kind of there. They've had their amusing moments, though. Like, the quote about the back scratching is still amuses me, the whole audio cut of it, which needs to be thrown in right now. I can help you, you help me? I scratch your back, you scratch mine? Yeah, good deal, right? <laughs> so shall we depressingly eulogise JK and Mike? JK can eulogise himself, I think. Just as a warning, I will be listening to their show tomorrow, probably. <laughs> yeah, like with JK, it was... It, I mean... I don't remember the interview, but I'm sure he, I, I think he said something along the lines of, I blame Treasury. Treasury is the only reason why I lost. And Peru was too heavy for the rope. That's why I fell too. And that guy gave me bad directions. I heard he did call Treasury many, many unrepeatable swear words. And is currently sitting in Changi jail for profanity. I will never talk to you again, Michael. Along with his new cellmate, Tara Basro. Welcome to wonderful prison in Joe, Joe, Joe Carter. Where you may or may not be raped. I don't want to be raped! This is the worst! This is the worst! Can you just say protect your crotch, Tara, for me? <laughs> Please. <laughs> don't drop the soap, Tara! It will be a very bad mistake from personal experience. <laughs> Why are we ending on prison rape jokes? Because <laughs> that was what JK would have wanted us to do. I would have never eulogized any other contestant like that, but that's because that's JK and his really inappropriate sense of humor. JK earns earns the, this eulogy, because that's what he would have wanted. I genuinely dread to think what he's going to actually tweet us about this week. <laughs> I don't know. Because I sort of look forward to JK's tweets every week just to see what bits he's, he's put up on, but I'm genuinely intrigued to see what he's going to actually say when we <laughs> we have jokes about him being fat, uh, him getting raped in prison, <laughs> and worst of all, him having to share a cell with Tara Basra. Yeah, she won't even remember who JK is when they're in prison. She'll think he was a contestant from season 7. Tara Basra is basically the Dory of uh, Amazing Race Asia. Yeah. Tara Basra amnesiac. Right. <laughs> so next time, teams race up a volcano... There is a loot dans le boue, as uh, Fort Bayard would love to put it, and some wonderful levels of violence. Wonderful Indonesian violence. And we'll probably see a yield finally used. I think we probably will. So our prediction's still holding up. Maggie and Farrell winning this season, Eric and Rona second, and then Yvonne and Chloe third? Well, definitely the top two. I'm, I'm sort of undecided as to who's going to come in third. But it's definitely going to be an all-Filipino final. Oh yeah, the top two is going to be all Filipino. And we have a little announcement to make as well, because I'm assuming you're joining me for TAR 29? Uh, oh yes, that was just this week they officially announced today. It was. We've been waiting for our uh, for our premiere date, and it is the first week of April, I think? 6th of April, was it? No, April 21st is when they, the season comes back. Oh yeah, April 21st, which means that Amazing Race 29 coverage is going to start probably middle of April, I guess, whenever they release the cast. Yes, because, well, and that'll be a preview of show too anyway, because I get back from Europe, Morocco, and Cuba on April 9th. Yep, so it'll be a preview of some description, sort of mid to late April, and then we are on. We are on, like Donkey Kong. Which means we're basically going to go Amazing Race 29, then straight into Amazing Race Canada if, you know, there's actually any prospects of it being good. And then Amazing Race Asia 6, hopefully, guys? Hopefully. Producers? Well, hopefully we actually will have to do Amazing Race 29 coverage one week from, I don't know, somewhere in Southeast Asia when Garuda Fly is there. Oh, yes. Actually, it'd have to be two or three weeks, wouldn't it? Yeah, quite possibly. But yeah, we are complete and utter sellouts. If anyone from Amazing Race Asia wants to, you know, bring us along for the ride next year, feel free. You know where to contact us. You really do, seeing as though you follow us on everything anyway. <laughs> so is there anything else to say about this episode before we sign off for our second to last time this season already? Oh, um, just that. I think this episode walks in that Amazing Race Asia 5 is the best season of 2016 for English-speaking Amazing Race seasons. 
Yeah, it's not that that's much of a high bar because Amazing Race twenty eight. Not this year, anyway. Yeah, Amazing Race twenty eight. We found some good bits too. Amazing Race Canada four has the asterisk of having a great cast but an awful, awful location set. So yeah, I think by default it probably is. But I think it's earned it. I think even if the other seasons had been better, it probably would have still earned it. Which is pretty crazy considering how awful the first episode was, but everything else has been so good that's balanced out. Yeah, this cast is fantastic and all seem to be very nice people. Yes, even JK and Mike. But yeah, I think they've probably earned the title of best season of 2016. They won't earn the title of best season we've covered uh, on the podcast in 2016 because that's going to be Hunted because Hunted was amazing this year but it's up there definitely so congrats producers you get my thumbs up awesome so thank you for listening to this UR Team Member podcast you can join us next weekend for the penultimate recap if you've got any questions feel free to contact us on our Facebook page Reality TV Warriors on our Twitter account RCB Warriors our own Twitter pages MJ House over me and Log Super Wacky for Logan see you next week Peace out, and just chill till the next episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking treasure ever again. I'm going to use what happened as motivation to do well in this blink. Who's next to me? Am I the treasure, Luisa? Treasury, but it's okay. She's heavy. You don't have to worry about anyone else, uh, right? She's heavier than me. It's exhausting, Jesus. Treasury gets on it. I'm like, oh my God, it's getting worse. And then the whole thing moves, like, away. Treasury, stop moving so much. You're heavy. You're moving. I uh, it's coming. Jesus. JK, please. I have to keep still. I can't move because you're moving so much. <laughs>